Continuing on with my videos this week on Admin Site Enhancements plugin, the Pro version, we're going to take a look at the latest feature in which they've added, which is the Form Builder. Now, while this may be not as fully feature rich as some more advanced form builders like, you know, Gravity Forms or Fluent Forms or those kinds of things, there's some nice features inside here that I think if you have a use for them, it makes it so quick and easy to actually spin up a form with these functions. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As always, there are all applicable links in the description down below, and I'd recommend taking a look at the options because I can only cover so much in this kind of overview video. So first things first, you're going to need to enable this inside ASE Pro. Once installed, come into Tools and Enhancements, and then come down to the option for Utilities, and you'll see you have a new option called Form Builder. Once you enable this, You'll see it tells you some basic info, so your email delivery, so you're probably going to want to set up the SMTP functionality inside ASE, set that up, configure anything you want inside you, and you're basically good to go. Hit Save Changes, job done. You'll then have a new option called Forms, and inside there, there's three different sets of options. You can see and edit and create your forms. You've got the Styles option and the Entries option, which will kind of store these in your database so you can see them inside the dashboard of WordPress. Let's come into styles first of all to very quickly see what's available. Now currently you can see there's no styles created, but if we come into the add new styles, this is a very, very, very comprehensive set of styling options that allow you to customize pretty much all the aspects of your form and then apply that. So you can have multiple different kinds of styles. You can import and export these if you want to standardize it across multiple websites. But you'll see you can control the form. You can set the column gap, the row gap, for example. So if we change the column gap. You can see that expands or contracts based upon what we have, your row gaps and so on, all those options, your background colors. One thing I would love to see inside you, though, is everything is set to pixel values. It would be nice if we could use, you know, either variables that are sort of assigned globally, or at least use things like M's, REMs, and percentages and things like that. Pixels is okay, but it's nice to have a bit more flexibility for fluid design. But as you can see, there's lots of options here, including your buttons, your validation, your headings, your paragraphs, all those kinds of things. And then if you want to import or export, you can do that from here as a JSON file, say by hitting the export or dragging your file in. I don't want to go into too much detail about that. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what it's going to do and that there's a ton of options. What I'm more interested in, though, is coming into the forms themselves. So I've already created a single form, but we're going to ignore that. We're going to start from new. So we'll add a new form. We'll call this sample form and click create. And this is the editor. Now, this is a nice, straightforward, and well-designed area to be able to work on your forms. You can see down the left-hand side, you've got various different field types. You've got the edit option, and you've got your form options that allow you to arrange various different things like the label position, rename it, and so on. If we come into the add, we'll choose some of these options in a moment. We'd also notice we've got builder, we've got settings, which allows us to configure various different settings. This is the email notification. We've got our autoresponder and confirmation. So you can enable various different features. It's almost nice if someone sends an email from a form on your website that you also send them a confirmation so they know it's actually gone through as opposed to just a pop-up on screen that may not actually be true. Then you've got your style option. So you can see we've got no styles created, but if you create them, they'll be listed inside here. So that's pretty cool. Then we've got the update, you've got the preview, you've got your short code, and finally, you can jump through to your entries if you want to. So let's come back to our builder. Let's open up the options inside here. So we've got identity, so all the normal things. So let's say we want to pop in the name, the email, the website, the phone, and the address. You can see it is literally a case of just clicking, boom, they're added in super quick and easy. Forms can be one of those things that are kind of slow and painful to create. So anything that can speed that process up in my books is a good thing. Then you've got your text. So you can do text and text area. So if we drop in a text area, you can see the options there. If we select this, you can see we can now customize various different aspects. We've also got these advanced options to set up the max width for the percentage, apply custom CSS classes and so on. Pretty nifty, pretty easy to kind of set up. Come back into Add. You've got numeric and choices and so on. Some of the cool things inside here, though, things like NPS numerical scales, but the one I think is probably the most interesting, and personally, I haven't seen this in any other form plugins, but please correct me if I'm wrong, are the matrix options. So you've got your Likert matrix scale, your uniform dropdowns, and so on. I would recommend taking a look at the examples of these. There's some form examples which you can find on their website. But let's say we want this kind of like matrix scale. Click and add that in, and look at that. 
that's added that straight in and we've got a couple of different options a little nod there to uh, the wordpress drama pineapple or pizza is an excellent idea i agree so you can see we've got various different columns on here so we can edit this we can move them around so we can say you know drag that up for example we want to get rid of this one we'll x to close that out and say yeah we don't want that you can see how easy all this is want to customize this not a problem you can see once we select it the options are on the left hand side so we want to get rid of that on there hide the label set them required set the rows so if you want to add another row in and you can bulk edit here as well you can add a new row in add my new row you can customize the various different columns so you strongly agree and so on customize those add a description in again you've got your advanced options apply custom classes and so on it's pretty cool what you can do here let's get rid of some of these though let's just close this one down and get rid of some of these I want to show you some of the options for editing so now we've got the fields that we want let's say we want to bring the website URL in email and phone all into into line all you need to do is grab the little resize handle or the move handle position that and drop it over the top of this first one and it automatically spaces let's do the same thing for our phone drop that there we now have a three column layout again anything that makes creating forms simple and drag and drop easy like this I think is a positive thing so I like to see all those options and now you can just keep on adding whatever you want inside you so if you want to add hidden fields in you can do that so you can drop the user ID in if you want to bring in things like HTML and content you can add that in and there you go and click on that we now have the editor there you kind of get the idea it's probably quite self-explanatory you've also got a couple of different spam protection options from uh, ultra to recapture to turnstile and you can just drag add those in we haven't set those up but you obviously you can set those up by grabbing the key and so on setting those values inside ASE and then you can use them on all of your forms once you're happy we can click on update we can preview this and see what it looks like and as you can see it looks pretty nice and if you've applied a custom style then obviously that will be displayed here as well then if you want to embed this into whatever you're using bricks Gutenberg and so on simply grab the short code which is listed here copy that close it down drop that into your design and it's basically job done but all the basic things that you should need including actually some quite nice little advanced features are included inside this and because this is part of the provision again if you don't have the need for those really advanced forms where you may want calculations and so on this is probably gonna do the job for most use cases so nice to see this is included if you're a Gutenberg user where you have to install a third-party plugin to get you know a form this may do what you needed to do but the fact this is included as part of the pro plan I think is pretty nice to have hopefully this will be expanded upon in the future and maybe they'll bring in the ability to create some front-end dashboard options we've seen we've got the user ID as a hidden field it'd be great if we could expand this out and have the ability then to allow people to add content from the front end upload content you get the idea and because you've got the sort of custom post type functionality built into ASE Pro as well it'd be nice if we could combine all those things together and you could have one plugin that while it doesn't necessarily have all those advanced features or intermediate and advanced features has enough for most users to get the job done and then if they need something more advanced they can look at a more dedicated solution all in all, I think this is a great addition to ASE Pro, but as always, I'd love to get your feedback. Are you using this? Would this mean that you would stop using maybe a paid or free additional forms plugin? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links and anything else I've covered on ASC and ASE Pro will be listed down in the details down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.